Ruthless, bang for our buck, bucks fizz. This, of course, the headlines after England's 2-0 victory over Ukraine. Saka putting in another fantastic uh, man of the match performance. Uh, Frank is with us. James, you, you were at the game, which is kind of all about now. We've seen over these last two matches the emergence we knew already. How good Saka and Bellingham are. We know how key they're going to be now for the future success for England. Yeah, I was at both games, actually, and, and, and I thought Bellingham was really good in, in, uh, in Naples in the first half. I mean, that, that first 45 minutes against Italy in Italy was, was one of the best halves of football that they've played under Gareth Southgate. They lost control of it in the second half, and Italy, uh, you know, pushed for that equaliser and, uh, and ran them close. But I, I think the fact that England held on there, and then in the second half of the game against Ukraine, OK, albeit a different challenge, obviously, at home against a weaker team, but they, they, they controlled the game much better. And, and I think if you put those two performances together, what, what it really showed was, I think we already know that Jude Bellingham is going to hold down a position in England's midfield for a long time. But it's probably easy to forget that Bukayo Saka was certainly not a year ago guaranteed to be starting in this, uh, this England team. Mm. Southgate habitually these days plays 4-3-3 and obviously Harry Kane plays with the middle. But the wide positions... Uh, either side of him were, were very much up for grabs. But I think what Sack has done in, in, in the last, well, at the World Cup and really in this international window is, is just translate his Arsenal form into an England shirt. And he really now is, is uh, has nailed down that right sided position. And, it, and it's now on the rest. It's now on the Madisons, the Grealishes, Sterling, um, you know, Rashford to try and get in on that left hand side to make up that front three. What Sack has done in the last sort of 12, 18 months has been absolutely phenomenal for England. He's, he's one of their key players now. And he was one of the ones that missed a penalty at the Euros. Wasn't yes, he? yeah, was. Which, yeah. Makes yeah. It, which makes it, I think, even more commendable because, obviously, there would have been a lot of stupid online abuse. You know, people, fans are fickle, sometimes they don't forget. So to put that behind you, that big, huge disappointment, and then kick, kick on your career in the manner in which he has, brilliant. Do you want to play a game? Oh, here we oh, go. No, I know what the game is. What's it's a horrible game? game. What's the game? Because we're, it's a horrible game where people have to always pick between two players. No, no, no. I'm not, no, oh, no it's right. a different dance. Right. Are you, are you okay. saying I've no. jumped the gun? You have jumped uh, the gun. OK. Jude Bellingham's 19. How many senior starts has he made? Well, he went to Dortmund at 16. I think he had played for Birmingham. Not sure how many. 16, he's 19 now? Yes. Senior starts, you mean for club? Club and country. OK, I'm going to say... Country. <laughs> Carry the two. One second. That's right. Uh -huh. okay. International break's almost oh, over. Yes. Uh, <laughs> slow down. Uh, uh, here we go. 127. Not bad. 158 senior starts at, at 19 years of age. Wow. Which is incredible. I wanted you, to play. When you compare it to someone like Beckham or Scholes, who had barely made double figures at that age, James, just shows where he is. And it was interesting, one of that conversation between him and Gerard, and Gerard saying, look, he's so much more ahead than I was at that age. Well, I think Gerard had one cap, two caps, at the same age as Jude Bellingham for England. So, you know, he is, he is a long way ahead of Gerard, where, you know, comparably in terms of age. And, and really, it's his maturity. It's, you know, it's the composure authority in midfield that England have lacked, I think, at tournaments for a long time. If you think about even the Euro 2020 final where, you know, in the second half, Italy really controlled the, the, the game in midfield. Verratti, Jorginho started just moving it around and, and, and England started giving the ball away. They've missed it. Go back to 2018, Croatia, semi-final, same thing, took the lead, couldn't keep the ball, gradually got tired, lost control, lost the game. It, England have missed that kind of player who's got that composure, that authority, but not. But more than that, he's someone who can bounce off players and drive forward and really take a team through through the gears in central midfield. And look, I, I, Declan Rice and, and Calvin Phillips did an awful lot right in the Euros, um, you know, Euro 2020, but they're not those kind of players. They're quite safety first. They're, they're, they're not progressive in their passing. They don't have the ability to transition in the same way that Bellingham does. They don't have that that, that dynamism mid midfield, that X factor. And it, it is, it, I think they've been trying to keep a lid on it, you know, England, in, in terms of they didn't put him up for any media during the tournament in Qatar. And I think they've been trying to sort of just 
slowly get him into the into the fray so that Germany could be his time, obviously a country that he's playing his foot club football in at the moment. Um, but I don't think they can keep the lid on him anymore. You know, he, he, he you can't keep him out of that team now. And he's not quite doing it for 90 minutes yet. I think in the second half against Italy, he faded a little bit. He's played obviously a lot of football this season. That's the, 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 the smallest criticism I, I, I could I could give of a 19-year-old who's got the world at his feet. But if he can start dominating games like that for 90 minutes and just extend what he's already doing for a slightly longer period, he is going to be a, one of the biggest assets that England could have for the next 10, maybe even 15 years. Uh, Frank, obviously, maybe an English perspective. We're excited. We're biased. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah want, for sure. Do you want to pour scorn on this at all? <laughs> oh. You know, that guy, you know, I would love to see him play for Chelsea, but I have doubt that he would oh, come, but God. that guy is... <laughs> he wants oh. to win something, Frank. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, well... No, but that... Do you know what? I, I like what I heard from the guys, you know, uh, and uh, but to compare him, already comparing him to uh, Steven Gerrard, I think you have to wait for the end of his career to know uh, if he was better to uh, Steven Gerrard. Yes, he's ahead of Gerrard, you know, in terms of games played, uh, maybe goal scored, whatever it is. But Steven Gerrard has so much influences uh, into the game of Liverpool, but also the national team, was crucial at the end of the game. Sometimes scoring goals um, were very important for the national team, especially, uh, but also Liverpool. Uh, that is very hard for me to say where Billingham stands comparing to Gerald right now. It's hard for me to say, but definitely that guy is the future of any club wants to hire him. Is why I was talking about Chelsea, but especially the future of the national team. I mean, I mean that's crazy. The, the, what you have right now, and I pray for him to never be injured in his career, but you have one of the brightest player ever, you know, uh, in your national team, for sure. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.